Hi, hello friends. How are you today? This is Patty Bennett and we have something fun to do today. Well, we always have something fun on Fridays, don't we? We are going to make this cute ornament, wreath ornament, and coordinating wreath card. And today I am using the Stampin' Up! Joy of Noel stamp set and my Stampin' Blends. And these are the deckled circle dies. So those are the supplies we're using. And I'm going to walk you through coloring this and then how I kind of assembled and um, embellished <laughs> these and just kind of the story behind why I did what I did because I know that you always enjoy the um, the process of it. So if you are joining in live, you will be on Facebook and you will see the little red live button in the corner and it would be Friday, December 1st at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Now, can should we just take a minute? December 1st. Did you hear that? It's December. Like, I don't know. Where did October and November go? Because I, I, I don't know. It felt like it was just September. But anyway, <laughs> if you're watching live, I would love for you to just say hello and put a comment in the chat. If you want to click the heart button or the thumbs up button or something, uh, you can do that as well, just so that I know that you're here. And then um, for anybody who is watching the replay, you might be on my blog, you might be on my YouTube channel, or you might be on my Facebook page. So welcome from around the world and to whoever is watching. I, I see Linda in Manitoba, Canada. That is exciting. Who else is here? I see it says 22 people, but I haven't seen anybody else in the chat. Oh, hey, Patricia from Montana, Sonia. Hello. How is everybody today? Well, that's kind of you. Thank you. Sonia said she shared the video. That's really sweet. Hi, Mary. Hi, Sharon. I am so glad that you're all here today. Hey, Robin and Tammy. Yes, happy Friday. That is for sure. I think I was uh, about a minute early, so I'm just going to give everybody about 30 more seconds to find the live, and then we will move forward with our coloring and crafting and creating and all the supplies. I'll just put this here in case you are looking for the projects. I do have the supplies on my blog post today at pattystamps.com. Tomorrow you'll find the photos of these as well as this is the coloring guide and I have that shared on my blog post tomorrow. So we're going to look at that as we color, and you'll be able to find that Stampin' Blend coloring guide tomorrow on pattystamps.com. So when I say tomorrow, that is December 2nd. Um, hey, oh, we had a whole bunch of people join. Hey, Rosie, Glenda, Ethel, Kathy, Mary, how are you all? Welcome. I'm so glad that you're all here. I'm just actually really thankful that technology is working because um, if you're on my Love to Stamp group, you know the trials and tribulations I've been going through trying to do our weekly live that we do on Tuesdays. There have been lots of issues and I've found a little workaround. So for now, we're good. <laughs> hey, Jean. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Oh, is it Shella? I don't know if I've ever seen that name. That's beautiful. Hi, Esther. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm just so happy that you're joining today. So we are using the Joy of Noel stamp set today. And this actually does have matching dies, but I did not use them. But I'm going to show you how you certainly could have used them to create these. But I just used the stamp set today. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And I also used on this ornament here, the Merry Christmas is from Berry Cute. And I just thought that looked really fun as a banner on there. And the joy and peace on here, did I not get that stamp set out? 
Oh, I'm going to have to look up what that is from. It's probably on the supplies on my blog today. Um, I can't think off the top of my head what that's in. But I was just looking for something that fits sort of in a nice banner horizontal greeting. And then we're also using the adorable and fun and ever so popular trucking along bundle. So that is a stamp set and matching punch. And it is an online exclusive. You won't find this in a catalog. So you do have to shop in the online store. My store link is the easy way to get there is pattystamps.com slash shop. Or you can go to my blog and click any of the shop online buttons. So that is an online exclusive. And I just thought it was adorable on here. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to embellish this cute little wreath ornament. And I had made this really big fluffy bow and I thought, well, it's cute. And I looked up and you all know how I have this little container of um, all sorts of various odds and ends from other projects. And I looked up and I had a whole bunch of these cute trucks already stamped and punched. And I thought, well, that's going on my wreath because I just think that's totally adorable. And then I'll show you what I did with the little sprigs and holly leaves and the twine bow on there. And then we'll make one like this as well. And I did add a little gold bow on that one because I just thought it was kind of fun and dressed it up. And I don't know if you can tell, but I do have little gold pearls. I don't know if they're quite showing on the video, but I pulled in gold and I'll show you what paper that's from. But the first thing I wanted to show you was how I created the actual wreath because the stamp is just that. It's not an actual wreath. So I stamped it three times. And remember, with photopolymer, you always want to let your stamp lay down on your stamp table for just a moment and let it just go into its natural state. And then I just press my block onto it and pick it up. The, that's very important if this is a punched out item like the truck or if you were going to use... this one has a matching die. So if you were going to be die cutting this image, you do, what you don't want to do, let me just show you, is you don't want to pick up your stamp out of the case and put it down and smash it down because it can go into a different shape and then it won't match your die or your punch. So I always just let it rest for a minute, let it sit there. And when I know that it's kind of achieved its natural shape that it's supposed to be, I press my block to it. So there we go. Our stamp is ready. And, oh, this is kind of, I'll tell you this funny story while I'm getting the supplies out. So what I actually did was I stamped a ton of these and I took them along with just a few colors of green and red Stampin' Blends. And I took them on my last trip, which was our Stampin' Cruise to the East Coast, because I thought, oh, in all my free time, I'm going to color them all. Well, I had zero hours of free time and didn't color any of them. So when I got home, I colored them. <laughs> and so I have some extras that are colored. I'm going to show you how I did that. I just want you to notice all the beautiful shades of green on here. My preference, if you've followed me a while, you know when I color with Stampin' Blends, I don't just do one color. I like to combine lots of colors. So I think it just gives it a really pretty look. And I experimented and I found that the deckled circle, and I wrote it down here so I wouldn't forget to tell you, the ninth from the center... So if you start here and you count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you can see this one's missing. That was the best size for me to die cut my basic white and to stamp this image three times around. 
And that is what gave me this. And if you are really astute and you're kind of noticing, you'll notice this is not Memento Black. This is Shaded Spruce. And yes, you can stamp with a color and color with Stampin' Blends. It does not have to be black. And I just didn't want it super stark. Do you see how the green outline of the image just really makes the greens pop and come to life? It looks a little less like a coloring book shall we say, right? And a little more like a real wreath. So our shaded spruce ink is what I'm going to use. I'm going to kind of stand up and look, oh, this is hard, looking through my phone as I'm filming, but just start anywhere, okay? And then turn it. And once you do a couple of these, you will get the feel for right here, kind of how much to overlap. And it did take me just a couple of times to get that placement or that feeling of how far this overlaps so that when you're done, it looks like it was a wreath stamp. It doesn't look like you did three separate pieces. And then by the time you get it colored and everything, if you have one spot where you think, uh oh, that didn't look great the way it met, then here's your tip. That's where you bury it under your focal point. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> There's always a fix, right? <laughs> um, oh, thanks, Esther. She said it, it gives it a real look. Thank you. Thank you. Mary says, Joy and Peace right here is from Night Divine. Thank you so much for looking that up for me. Hey, John and Susan and Fran and Wanda, Kelly, Cheryl. Hi, Jeanne. It, wow, lots of people jumped in. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate that. So that's kind of your first tip is you can create a wreath out of this one piece. And if you use the ninth decal circle from the center, stamp it three times, it works really well. You may find something else works better for you or just as well, and that is great as well. So the one thing I did want to point out is that I could have stamped this on a separate piece of white and used the matching die and die cut it three times and achieved the same thing. I could have layered three of these dies. So that's just an alternate. If you would prefer to do that, maybe you don't have the deckled circles or a circle die cut that's big enough, that's how you could kind of achieve the same thing and then just do it on a square or a rectangle. The second tip was that you don't have to use Memento Black. You can Stamp with other colors and color them with your stamp and blends. So there's two tips for you. And then the third tip, which I mentioned earlier, this will be on my blog tomorrow. This is my coloring chart. I just wanted to give you a little idea of the order I went in and the colors I used. So I used six colors. So I have got light and dark parakeet party. I have got light shaded spruce. I have got light granny apple. And then I have dark, no, light cherry cobbler. You could use dark. It doesn't matter. Either cherry cobbler. And then I have light poppy parade. So those are the colors I used. And then I'm going to show you how I also used pool party. I'm just going to set that aside for the moment. And then I did use Wink of Stella at the end. You may look at this combo and think, I don't know, that's, I'm not sure I would have put those together. And you know, I'm not either always sure, but I always love to play. And then I see what works, I write it down. And then I know exactly what I want to use on my project. And I will just say real quickly, these little stickers, I just want to show you this amazingly adorable little thing. This is a printer. And I saw it, I think, advertised on Facebook. 
And I thought, oh, what's that? That's adorable. What is this? It was only $17.99. The brand is Nimbot. M-N-I-I-M-B-O-T. I assume that's how you say it, Nimbot. And it is, hang on, let me just grab the box over here so I can tell you the correct thing. It's a D110. They have different models, but it's a D110. That's the one I bought. And it just, it plugs in to um, power with this USB cable and it creates labels through an app on your phone. There's a little brochure that comes with it. And that's what I use to make these labels. They The labels come in different sizes. They're not expensive. They just, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Didn't mean to bump that. They come in little boxes like this. They're thermal. So there's no ink in there. It's just a thermal system. And I like this because my eyes are not that great. And I have trouble reading these tinier words. So I have just labeled mine like this. And you can use, if you have a different labeling system, you can use whatever works for you. But I don't personally care for the labels that are on the end. Because again, those are also tiny. And I like looking up at my, it's in front of me, I'm pointing up there, my wall of Stampin' Blends and seeing all the colors. I don't want to see a bunch of white dots. So I personally, for me, I like it labeled here. So I always just like to share my tips with you. And, you know, you can take it or leave it. You don't have to do that. But if you want to, you can always try that. So is that printer new to anyone? I'm just wondering if everybody else has it or um, if it's new to you. I'm, I'm just curious because I don't think that I had seen it. And it was just something that came across my feed. And I thought, oh, I really like that. I'm going to use it. I'm going to buy it for, for $17.99. I mean, can you beat that, right? <laughs> So we're going to start with Light Parakeet Party. And for this particular image, I do a really quick, loose color on each of the leaves. You can see I'm not being particular. I'm not trying to stay in the lines. I'm just giving color to each of the leaves. And I know there are a lot of wonderful colorists who would just cringe at the way I just did that. And they would have just already only been on like the second leaf so far. To me, it's okay. I love the way these turned out. It's a little bit loose. It's almost a watercolor look. Totally fine with me. You do what works for you. <laughs> and then on a few of these sprigs, I'm going to call these like an evergreen sprig. I did a couple squiggles, not all of them, and I didn't fill them in, just a little bit of color. So that's number one, the light parakeet party. And again, this coloring chart will be on my blog tomorrow, pattystamps.com. The next one I used was light shaded spruce. And I went through and just gave a little bit of shading and shadow. Again, this is loose, it's just quick, it's easy, not anything really particular. Just to give that second dash of color. And then I went through and gave a little bit of color to some of these evergreens or you know, whatever, whatever we're calling those, just a little bit, not a, not a ton. Okay, so now we have the two colors on there. So I'm going to put them over here as they're done. And then number three was light granny apple green. And uh, just a little bit of color on some, not all, but some. I wanted some of them to have some of this yellow green instead of all of them having the blue green tone. And I'll check your comments in just a minute. So just give me a second here. Going back, filling in a few of those evergreen sprig pieces. Just a little bit here and there. My whole idea on this was to have lots of color and lots of lights and darks. 
The last of the green is the dark parakeet party. And this is where I'm going to want to fill in anything that hasn't been colored. I'm going to go over most of the leaves that I already did. Again, quick, loose, more of a watercolor feel, not necessarily a staying inside the line coloring book feel. This is a looser, looser finish. Okay, and then that's it. Oh, a little bit there. Then I just kind of give it a once over. Did I catch all the leaves? Maybe a little bit down here. And I think here's one. And like, that's it. So that's the four greens that I used. And then for Cherry Cobbler, thank you, Martha. She says, I love how you use color. That is so sweet of you. Let's see. Alana is saying, those are beautiful. Love the swatch of color of the blends all gathered up. Thank you. Let's see. Oh, Jean said her daughter is a teacher and would probably love this little printer. I agree. Uh, for $17.99, I don't know if it's still that cheap, but it's been on sale on and off like forever. So check that out on Amazon. Oh, yes. Yeah. So Elaine is asking, do I use it in addition to my Brother P-Touch Cube? Yes. So the Brother P-Touch is the one that I've been using forever to label all of my um, stamp and storage magnet sheets and the pockets. And then I also use it to label my embossing folders and my paper storage and all those things. So yes, I still use both of them. Was there another question? Let me just look real quick. <laughs> yeah, Tracy said, I need a Nimbot now. And especially, so here's another tip. So this is so tiny and easy to use and quick. Here's what I was thinking. From now on, when I am doing an event, um, a few times a year, I'll do an event with Kirsten or Tammy or our stamping cruises. I'm going to bring this. Because if something comes up and like somebody needs to borrow something or I need to put my whatever out on a table, I can so quickly label it with this. Like what a great idea, right? Or if somebody else says, you know, oh, I keep replacing, keep misplacing my bone folder or something, you could make a label for them in 10 seconds. So I thought, oh, this is like the, the bestest little thingy. I just love it. I think it's so fun. So, the, oh, no worries, Pat. No worries. You can watch the replay to watch the coloring if you want to. So then for the berries, I'm using the bullet tip. So far, I had used the brush tip on everything, but um, this is the bullet tip. This is cherry cobbler. It doesn't matter if this is light or dark. Either one will do the job. And I'm making a dot on each berry, not in the middle. I'm trying to do it sort of to one ed edge. Does a circle have an edge? I don't know if that sounded right. But anyway, I'm not trying to do it in the center. I'm trying to leave a little spot of white because we're going to fill that in with the poppy parade. Um, sweet sorbet would also work or real red. You can pick and choose a red that you have. So let me hold that close for a minute so you can see that. Do you see how those dots of dark are not in the middle? I tried to leave some light. And then I just come with whatever my lighter color is going to be. And I'm making kind of a loose, big plop of color. It's okay if it goes outside the line a little bit. I know. Can you believe I'm saying that out loud? <laughs> because as a kid... I never, ever colored outside the line, ever. Like, that was just unheard of. I'm just one of those kids. But I've learned to loosen up a little bit in my adult life. <laughs> and there we go. That is our wreath with four different greens and two different reds. And isn't it pretty? I think this is so beautiful. I love this. You can use the exact same coloring method for this one. And 
I don't know if everything's going to fall over if I try to look over here. I don't, I may have already mailed them. I made cards with this one, colored it the exact same way, but I think I mailed them all already. But um, yeah, e the coloring method works for either one. Alana, you're so sweet. She said she feels like she won the lottery finding me live. That is just like the sweetest thing. I miss you, Alana. I hope you're doing well. Hi, Robin. The base. That's a good word. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, because a circle doesn't really have an edge. <laughs> oh, Jane is asking about the price of the refills. They were kind of all different prices, uh, but not expensive. Now, let me think. Um, How much did I pay for these? I... Don't hold me to it, but I want to say it was like $7.99, I think. And I'm not sure how many are in here, but there was a lot. I think it's like 90 labels or something, I think. I can't remember for sure. Sorry. Thank you, Diana. Hi, Tina. Welcome. Let's see. Esther, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Alana. Thank you. <laughs> Pat says I'm such a rebel. I know. Well, not usually. <laughs> not usually. So um, the last thing I wanted to show you, two things. So I used Wink of Stella to highlight a lot of the leaves. And it's probably kind of useless trying to show you because it really does not show up well on camera. But you can trust me in person. It's very pretty when you use Wink of Stella. Then I wanted to show you the difference here of using the pool party marker. Can you see how I've used the pool party just a little bit around the edges of that one, but not on this one? I left this one without so I could show you the difference. Does it show? Can you see that? In person, it just makes a really lovely difference. And I want to show you what I did. This is light pool party. And just very loosely, I know there's that word again, loosely. My dad would really be proud because watercolor, you know, he's a was a watercolor artist. Watercolor is all about being loose with your color. And that's something that I just couldn't grasp for a long time with my card making and coloring. Uh, that word loose didn't like, oh, you know how you just like shudder? <laughs> I couldn't do it. And now I've just tried to learn to kind of embrace it and be a little more free and loose with coloring and techniques. So I'm really loosely, quickly going around, not the berries, but all the leaves. Just like little, did you see how fast that was? That's it. That's the whole thing. And it just really gives a nice sort of a shadow and an added layer of depth. So that is an option. You don't have to do that, but I would encourage you maybe to just try that as, you know, kind of an option of something that maybe you'd want to add to your coloring. And then just, here's that word again, loosely <laughs> dabbling on some Wink of Stella and just kind of tap, tap here, there, and that's it. So there we go. And I know I gabbed a lot during that, but really, if you just sat and colored it, this does not take that long. So if you're like me and you love coloring, this is complete, total fun and therapy, <laughs> right? Just love it. So again, there's our beautiful colors and you can download that coloring guide tomorrow on pattystamps.com if you want to follow along or, you know, make your own, your own color idea. So to finish off the wreath, I want to give you a few tips, show you kind of what I did. Thank you, Mary. Um, let's see. Mary says, I use Light Pool Party, our stamp images too. So I'm, I'm not quite understanding that, but but maybe you can um, type that a different way. Sorry, my brain isn't catching that. Uh, it grounds the image. Yes, exactly, Robin. It, it does kind of ground the image and it's not just floating 
on the circle. You're right. That's a good way to put it. Let's see. Oh, good. Alana can see it. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Peach. Oh, good. You guys can see the difference. Yay. I'm glad. I, I know it's kind of hard. Hi, Christine. How are you? Hi, Tina. I'm glad you caught me live as well. Oh, I'm glad you like the truck, Julie. Thank you. Yeah, I was talking about that earlier. So to finish off this um, ornament, what I decided to do was I die cut a stack of circles that are slightly smaller. I'll show you. It's like maybe two sizes smaller. And I glued, I think, about four of them together. You could also use, uh, if you have chipboard or something that you want to cut in a circle, but I glued several together and then I glued it on the back and I took a plain circle and I glued it on here. So I just wrote Christmas 2023 on the back and that gave it some thickness and stability. So that's an option. You don't have to finish it off that way or you could just maybe glue it to a piece of chipboard or whatever you'd like. It totally up to you, but I just am showing you what I did to finish it off. And then all of these cute little sprig pieces, I'm going to show you these. There's one of the bows that I was going to use, but I didn't. So I used some dies and I also used the bow punch I'll put these out so I can show you, then I'll show you the paper. I just did a whole bunch of different pieces. Okay, so here's here's a whole bunch of different pieces, and I'll show you. This is the bow punch. This has been really popular this fall, and I believe it is on back order for, I should have looked at the date. It is, well, I'm not back order because it's not officially back order. It's unavailable for a couple more weeks, but it will be available again. And the papers that I used, the, what is this called? Ox, not oxidized gold. I forget. This is in the annual catalog. I know I included it in the supply list today on my blog. I'm sorry, I can't. Why can't I remember the name of this? Somebody will remember for me. But you can see here where I have die cut and punched. Distressed gold. Thank you, Alana. Die cut and punched out of that. And then, I'm not sure really why I selected this, but I did. I used from the Joyful package, the green and gold plaid, and this gold kind of, what, um, wood grain, I guess, right? So I'll show you, Just I just punched out of those. And I don't really know what possessed me to grab that one, but I think it turned out really pretty. So we'll, we'll punch a couple of those. And then the other one I used is the this green side because it has the shaded spruce which we used for the um, coloring so here's the other side of it and sorry I don't know why my brain is like going blank that is from joy of Christmas the joy of Christmas pack so I did punch and die cut some from that so just, you know, as simple as, as punching, right? And punch a couple out of this. And I bet we can get, I think we can get another, a large one right there, right? Right there. So that's just what I did. I just used up some kind of scrap-ish pieces so that I could get a whole bunch of these gold and green pieces to use. And the other 
this sprig is from the Joy of Noel. So this is part of the bundle, if you get the bundle that matches the stamp set we used. There were the circles and then some of the other pieces I used that holly leaf and I also just randomly die cut some other things out of the Christmas classic dies and used those and I just you know how I do I just put them all in my little container and then I start decorating so the way that I decorated remember at the beginning when I was stamping this I said if you feel that there is a part on your circle that isn't like you know, 100% perfect, you wish you would have maybe spaced it a little differently or whatever, then that's where you can start building your little sprigs and whatnot. So I don't know, right here, I feel like that little white spot maybe could have been a little bit better. So that's where I'm going to start building. And I'll show you, excuse my reach, what I did to start. I just put Seal Plus down here. And then I just started to build like this. So these are just stuck right to that seal plus. And those of you that know me well are going to shudder at this as well. But I tried not to make it 100% symmetrical. Can you even believe that? I know. You're like, what? Who is this lady that I'm watching today? What is she even doing? Yeah, I think that'll be pretty. Some of that. And then just to be different, I think I might use the truck that I put the presents in instead of the same truck with the tree. See how this this truck has the little tree in the bed of the truck? But there's also this cute little present image that I colored and cut. So I'm kind of kind of thinking. I don't know, but the blue is bothering me. I don't know. Which one? I'll pause for a minute and I'll put these in the cup while you vote. What do you think? The tree or the presents? Let me know. Which one should I do? I'll be brave. I'll use whichever one the majority says. Oh, I can see it's going to cover up that. So I think I'll get another get another little sprig ready maybe for up here. Yeah, I think I'll put another little sprig up here. Okay, presents, tree, presents, 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 presents. Okay, presents is winning. My goodness, we'll just put the tree back. Bye-bye, tree. We'll use you on another day. <laughs> and then to attach this, I used, you know, my trusty little bucket of pieces of adhesive sheets because I just love those. And I think I might have to trim this down a little, little, little tiny bit. So that's going to get stuck on. And to make... That'll get stuck on there. To make this little twine bow, I want to show you what I did. I've done this before, and I think when I showed it before, a lot of you said, oh my gosh, I love that tip. So I thought I'd show it again. So you know how a lot of people are really good at winding the twine around like this, right? And then putting it down on their project and it looks great. Okay. I feel like a total failure whenever I try that. I just, I feel like every time I do it, it's just a mess. So I've shown this before and I really like this alternate idea. I am going to triple my twine. So I just went back and forth. Till I have about, well, maybe what, 10, 11 inches. So three strands. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a bow. And kind of pull. You know what? I think I want it bigger. So hang on. 
So maybe bigger than 10 inches. So let's do that again. So maybe like 12, 13 inches ish. Okay. There we go. That's going to be better. Okay. So about 12 or 13 inches. Then I'm going to tie a bow. And as I pull this tight, I'm kind of pulling so that not all the loops are absolutely the same size. They're a little bit, little bit different from each other. Okay, but I have these six loops now. And the little tail ends. And then I'm going to stick that down and stick this on top. And just for me personally, I like those loops better than trying to make that like nest thing, you know, right? So anyway, that's, that's just my tip. If it helps you, great. If you are one of those amazing people that can create one of those kind of nest looking things, bows, whatever, whatever you want to call it, more power to you. I envy you. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> well, I can do it. I just don't like how it turns out. I don't know. So then we're just going to add that on top and that kind of helps hold it down. And then we just have some, you know, of these random loops and, and pieces and it just gives a little interest. So that's it. That's my dip. I'm going to stick this piece tuck it in there with a glue dot to give a little extra gold and there you have it and then you can add your greeting so I think I will go ahead and oh uh, the Nimbot somebody was asking this this little printer that I was talking about that I used to label my stamp and blends it's on Amazon and Nimbot is the brand I'm assuming that's how you say it n i i m b o t maybe it's like some fancy foreign word and I'm saying it completely wrong I don't know but You know, like how some people say Target instead of Target. <laughs> so then for the little banner, I like to just sort of do this to it so that I can put some foam adhesive in the middle and tuck it in there. Maybe it will go this direction. And then it, it kind of has a little um, dimension in the middle. I like that. There we go. And then for the string or hanger, I guess, I just, when I got them all glued together, I used my crocodile, which probably many of you have. You can use whatever hole punch, punch a hole, and then just add red ribbon at the top. And then that gives you your hanger that you can use to hang it on the tree. And you could probably even put this on a package to start out with if you wanted to and then let the recipient put it on their tree so there that is the or oh, that is the ornament i hope you like that idea then i just want to show you the card and i had a second idea that i thought i'd show you quickly this embossed piece in the background it to me it kind of looks like poinsettia flowers and it is from the basics 3d embossing folder set it's a set of three again another online exclusive and i thought that this sweet sorbet color made this kind of light and bright and kind of popped i liked it i did the same idea with those sprigs but i put the gold bow the golden vanilla bow on it and then like i showed you at the beginning the gold pearls I thought those are super pretty on here but I had another idea 
about putting it on this paper that I showed you earlier. This is a piece of that joyful. And I was wondering, what do you think if we kind of added and decorated and did the same idea. But what do you think about it on that paper? I thought it really dressed it up and made it a little more formal and less um, whimsical, less playful, like the truck. That's really playful and fun. And I thought this made it a little more dressy. So I thought I would try that. But I hadn't quite decided what color card base. I don't know. I was thinking about something gold, but I, I don't know. So let's see. Oh, loves the music paper. Okay. Okay. Well, let's try it. I wonder if just, I'm just thinking maybe just thick white in the background just to keep it super simple and clean. Because I was thinking of a green but I, I don't know. I think that's really pretty. So I think I'll go with that. And shaded spruce. Okay, let me try. Let me see what that looks like as a background. I have to score this one. It's not scored yet. See what that looks like. That was my first thought, and then I thought it might be kind of too dark. I don't know. But if we're going for like formal and a little more dramatic, then maybe that would be perfect. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. <gasps> yes, let's do that. I love that. Thank you. Who said that? Let's see. I have to look back here. Oh, now I can't find it. Somebody said that. Gay says, what set kit is this? So this is the Joy of Noel bundle. And you can see all of the supplies on my blog today. They're all there. So you can go see all those. So I stamped this three times to make the wreath and colored it. It's on the deckled circle dies. And then this paper is called Joyful. And it's an online. No, no, it's in the holiday catalog. Yeah. Yeah, the green. Oh, it does look royal, Shan. Yes. Okay, let's go with the shaded spruce. Let's do that. It'll be a completely different look from this one, won't it? I think that'll be really pretty. Sorry for my reach. Didn't have my glue handy. I did think about cutting this down and making a gold border with that distressed gold paper, but I don't know. I kind of don't think it needed it. it. It would be beautiful as an extra added touch, but I think it's okay just layered like that. Then I'll take some of my foam adhesive and like we'll put... Oh, maybe just two. I think two will work. If you've watched me long, you know that I prefer this over a whole bunch of dimensionals. I just don't like picking like 20 different dimensional pieces off of a card or a project. It's, I just prefer. I think I will add just... A little to the edge here. I don't want it to sag. <laughs> but it's just my preference. You can totally use dimensionals. I just love adhesive sheets. I mean adhesive foam sheets, not to be confused with adhesive sheets. They come in a pack like this. I have tons because I use them like water. So let's see, should we put, let's put this part at the bottom. I don't know, up, let's go up a little bit. Let's live dangerously. It's not in the middle. Can you even believe that? It's not in the middle. Who am I? Who took Patty Bennett away and replaced her with this person who is 
coloring loosely and adding things haphazardly, not symmetrically. I don't know. <laughs> Something happened. Something happened. Oh, let's use this piece. This one. Let's do this one. And I think I'll put the gold bow on this because of all the pretty... Oh, yeah. Look how pretty that is. Oh, my gosh. That's so pretty. Oh, my gosh. So if we do a little, little that. And then I think maybe a little just a something sticking up at the top. Yep. Oh my goodness. How beautiful would that be? And for the bow, I don't I had never really tried this before, but I tried it on this card and it worked great. I took a piece of my foam adhesive sheet and I made a little strip. That might be just a tiny bit too long. I just made a little strip of it. You could also do this with the edge piece of your dimensionals. And I stuck it down on the back, and then I just used that to attach the bow. Hang on, I just want to try to fluff these out just a little bit here before I stick it down. And that held the bow on really well. Oh my gosh, this turned out so pretty. How lovely. How beautiful. Isn't that pretty? I love it. This is the official name is Satin Edge Ribbon Gold. Gold Satin Edge Ribbon. I was thinking this was called Golden Vanilla something or other, but um, anyway, it's that's what this is. And then we can, you know, this one almost doesn't need a greeting. Or what if we tucked it in like that? What do you think? Greeting, yes or no? What do you say? Give me a little vote. Let's see. Let's see. John says, does that mean you don't have dimensional backing pieces all over the house? <laughs> exactly, John. <laughs> Not so many anymore. <laughs> um, yes for greeting. Okay, we'll add the greeting. Glenda says, too much Thanksgiving turkey? Could be, huh? <laughs> Exploring my options. There we go. Thanks, Gail. She said it's a great video. That is super kind of you. Thank you. All right, we'll add the greeting. Several of you are saying yes. So let's do that. And I think we need to add some, maybe some um, gold pearls or something. Don't you think the gold would be pretty on this one with all the, the gold accents we have? Hang on, I did not cut that well. I was talking and not paying attention. So if we kind of tuck that in like that, then I don't know where they are. This is what I always do. I always like grab the whole thing. There's gold. And I go through them until I find something that I want. Oh, those would be pretty. Those gold. Gold sequins would be pretty. I just grab a stack, whatever's in the front of my bucket there. Oh, these, I don't know if you can see it in person, but the shininess of the gold festive pearls is just making everything sparkly. This, even though these are beautiful, it kind of just tones it down too much for me. So I think we'll go with the festive pearls. <laughs> oh, that red doesn't go anyway. I was going to say, I think I used the red, but it doesn't matter. They're, the gold is going to be much prettier. 
So we'll just randomly put some gold pearls just around the wreath in little groups of three, just to give this card that extra gold speckly, sparkly, pretty touch. What do you think? I think it's gorgeous. I think I need to or order more festive pearls. I also need to use, obviously, my blue and my silver ones because I used up all the red ones and now I've got half of the gold ones are gone. <gasps> that is so pretty. That is so gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Look how pretty that turned out. I think that's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So we have one that's a little more fun, festive, bright, a little more playful with the sweet sorbet. And then we have this one that's a little more regal, as you all were pointing out. And then we have the option for making a, an ornament wreath. Um, yeah, festive pearls. Okay, awesome. I'm just looking at you were all commenting while I was doing that. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I'm so glad you enjoyed this. So um, questions. Do you have any questions about any of this? You can find the products today at pattystamps.com. If you don't have a demonstrator, if you need one, if you need catalogs, you can contact me through my blog. And then don't forget tomorrow, the still photo, well, the photos, still photos. Who says that? The photos will be on my blog as well as you can download the coloring chart if you want to do the wreath the same that I did. Yes, thank you, everybody. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I'm so glad you liked it. I just, I love spending Fridays with you and I love it when technology cooperates. That's always a bonus, right? I do appreciate your time. I know it's a lot of time that we spend together, but I appreciate it. I just love chatting with you and getting your feedback and seeing what you think about the project. So anyway, yeah, happy December. Can you even believe it? I mean, I just, I don't know. I'm just speechless about December. But we will have a couple more videos next week. My plan is to have the products that I have pre-ordered from the mini catalog, and Celebration. These both start in January. So I will be placing my overnight order on Tuesday. My goodies will come Wednesday, and I will spend all day Thursday getting things ready for you so that next week on the 8th of December, we can look at all of the new goodies together. And then 15th, I'm not sure what we're doing, but on the 22nd, I will probably not have a live for you just because family will be here and I will just probably be enjoying the Christmas weekend. So I do look forward to next weekend with you, though. Next next Friday is going to be so fun. You're welcome, Sharon and Mary Babs. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Kelly, Linda, Robin, Liz. Oh, my goodness. So many. Thank you so, so much for your sweet comments. Hi, Nell. Um, uh, oh, the sentiments. Uh, it's should be on my blog today. This is from Very Cute. Merry Christmas is from Very Cute. And this is from Night Divine. Uh, if I left it off my blog today, I apologize. I, I thought I caught that, but I might not have. So have a wonderfully fabulous weekend, everybody, and enjoy your holiday preparations, and I will see you next week. Bye.